Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, Jay Hood, Geeky GMT. Thanks for already coming in to the uh, live unboxing we have for Comic Jabroni's Mystery Box. Um, Klaus, it was good to see you over on the other stream. Thanks for jumping into this one. I got Metarog with me again. What's up, Metarog? Hey, <clears throat> greetings, everybody. Good, good. Back again and ready to go. <laughs> ready to rock and roll. Um, so I wanted to get your opinion. You are not a mystery box guy whatsoever, right? Okay. Well, I've only gotten one mystery box, and that was a Bueller box, which is really, you know, uh, but I, and I got it because he 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 gets it from like these fifty cent bins, uh -huh. and and so the value is there because he sells it so cheap, ten dollars or whatever it was, yeah. you know. Yeah. And um, and I wanted to support Bueller, you know. He's your buddy, my buddy, you know. He's yes, such a great supporter of this community. Um, so that is, and that's the only kind of mystery box that I've gotten and only, and I don't have anything against them, you know, per se. Uh, it's just that for me, I'm very focused on my collection. It's pretty much bronze age and below at this point. So yeah, most mystery boxes have a lot of newer variants, things like that, that I'm, I'm not interested in. And, you know, and then I have to go to the trouble of reselling them. Really. Yeah. It's not something that's for me. I, I, but I do like to see videos of people doing them and, you know, being surprised with grand prizes and so on and so forth. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Area 51 says, this is like deja vu. <laughs> it is, right? Yogi Bear was right. <laughs> What's up, Area 51? Thanks for jumping in this one again, Gorilla Grodd. Thank you for stopping by. So I, this is hilarious, man. But I guess um, Comic Jabroni, he was going to jump on with me, but maybe we had our communication wrong. But he's live now on another show doing his thing. So yeah. <laughs> I guess it's not going to work out today with him jumping in here. But that's okay, man. He sold these mystery boxes for $50 plus $15 shipping. Uh, he said that you're definitely going to get your money's worth in each box. And um, he said, uh, let's see, he I think he sold 20 of them. And he's trying to get a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle number one, first print. Uh, he loves the turtles. And as soon as I heard him say that, I'm like, you know what? I did mystery boxes. I got to support the family. Um, and the cool thing was is that one of his friends – uh, gave him a book for free to put into his mystery boxes. And that was a Hulk 180. And so Comic Fu 2814 won that one. So congrats to you, brother. Yeah, and um, what a pull. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how cool was that? <laughs> Very. So I, I thought I'd jump on it, make sure I show some love and support, help him get to that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle number one. I was looking at that book this year. It was one of the ones I thought I might want to go after because I love the turtles. But I decided they're a little bit further down than a couple of other characters that I love. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, when I saw the 9.0 white pages and it was going for eight grand, <laughs> yeah, it helped me uh, change my mind pretty quick. Right? Doesn't, doesn't that refocus you really quick? Uh, really quick, man. <laughs> so, which eventually that would be worth it to me at some point, you know. But I'd rather, if I'm going to spend eight grand on a book, uh, I'd rather do that on a Fantastic Four one, a Hulk right. one, uh, an ASM 15, you know, um, if that can even get me those books, to be honest. But still, I'd rather put it into something else uh, that I really, really love. And then I do love the Turtles, but they're farther down the rung, sure. you know? Sure. Yeah, they're, they're, they're down the queue. I understand it. Did you see... Um... The toys that made us the the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle episode. I have it, man. I need to go back Whoa. and watch that. Everyone's saying it's amazing. That. You gotta see it because it. I mean, I knew about most of what went on, but when you see how like it, it almost never happened, you know, yeah. it was just a tick from never happening. Yeah. So uh, a phenomenon is a is upon us by really just split seconds. So yeah. that's. I just thought it was very interesting the way they presented it there. Yeah. I everybody says you need to watch it. I definitely play with uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle toys. I had the van. I had all the turtles. I had Bebop, Rocksteady, the Frog, uh, Usagi, Yo Jimbo. Like <laughs> I loved it, man. So Splinter, yes, Shredder, Splinter, Shredder. Yeah. So I'd actually always have the Ninja Turtles team up with whoever to go against Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> so but nice, um nice. it's yeah man it's just uh i'll go back and watch that for sure yeah but, definitely do definitely do definitely do. but it's, let's 
it's really interesting. I, like I said, it's like, it, and you know, the Eastman and Laird are actually on there. Yep. So, yep. You, man, they're amazing. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> so this is this is uh, Jabroni's um, mystery box. When I got it, guys, I was so scared because it came in one of these. And the reason it's out of there is because it was soaked through. Hey, BLC, what's up, man? Uh oh. And um, when I was, I was like, dude, your box just came and it was soaked. I mean, wet as could be. All the cardboard had like fallen apart. And uh, hey, what's up, Lords of the Long Box? Thanks for stopping in. Uh, broke because of comics. Barinkin, thank you guys for being here. Uh, Ver uh, Varingian Vigilante, hello, hello. Um, yeah, so I was freaked out, but. This looked like it was good. I pulled this out, and I'm ready to pop it open, man. Jay Hood Creative's also in here. Uh, What's up, Jay Hood? Really, really great uh, artist. I, I happen to have won his contest, uh, as it just so happens. Yes, he did. <laughs> I, I, you know, you man, win everything. I don't know what to tell you. It's this week. I, I don't know. I mean, if I was a gambling man, I'd play the lottery, you know, because it's just like everything's coming up roses. Yep. Yes, but I don't. Long box. That's what Metarog was saying. He says I have to watch that one, man. Yeah, so yeah I do. definitely want to. You, do. you know, I, I was I was so close to getting one of those Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one because I worked at the shop when it came out. Really? And they got they had a copy that was there, and I looked at it. It's, okay, you're ready to hit me. Okay, yeah, I looked yeah. at it and I said, "Oh man, this art is just so amateurish." You know, I was like, I don't, I don't want to spend, you know, whatever it was, the buck or whatever it was for it, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so uh, the, the uh, owner of the shop uh, sold it to, you know, another guy who came in a little later on. Yeah. I don't know if I could find that guy. Oh, man, you know what? Uh, first time I saw Eastman art, it was after I had seen the Ninja Turtle um, cartoons. And I was like, that's some weird art, you know? Yeah. But over time, I've just really fallen in love with it. And actually, right now, I, I collect a couple of the Ninja Turtle um, issues that are coming out. Mm -hmm. And I always get the Eastman variants. Oh, okay. Cool. So just become, I've become a fan of it, man, for sure. But Big Will, what's up, Big Will? I have arrived. Hey. Uh, or Mike. Hello, hello. Thanks for stopping in while you're driving home, man. I appreciate that. Super Russ 9000. Thank Russ. you. Man. Big Will, I noticed, changed his name from Big Will to Big Will Comics. Oh, did you notice that? I didn't notice that till you said it right now. Mm. Beautiful. Okay, now. now we Beautiful. have a concentration here. <laughs> You're so right, bro. Because of comics, I'm an Eagle Scout. And here I am cutting towards myself. Oh, uh, always yeah. cut away. Always That's cut away. Right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Okay, so, man, I don't know which is where I should start from. But here we go. So here's the pack. I just opened all the blue tape. And looks like there's about 10 books in here. So let's see what's inside. Whew. All right, here we go. Safety first. You're absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> they okay, care cool. so much about you, Matt. They, they don't even want you to cut yourself. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we got Iron Man 179 and 180. So I might be coming from the back here. So Iron Man 180. Very nice. I like those monochromatic covers. Very nice. Yeah, this is a cool cover, man. I really yeah. like it. Yeah, I got those. I bought those off the stand. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So yep, see. old man talking over here, guys. Yep. Oh, that's cool. So Project Superpowers. I actually have this book right now. Yeah, me too. That's actually really good. That that That's, uh, what is it? Uh, Black Terror, uh, Golden Age Daredevil. Yeah, I forgot who the other one is. <laughs> yeah, I'm not 100% sure because I have yeah, not. I, I forgot, yeah. Oh, those that's, those are pretty good. No worries, Russ. I appreciate you, man, and all your support. Don't even worry about it. Oh, dang. Now that is violent. <laughs> uh -oh. And the comic book is called Pretty Violent. Dang. <laughs> I'm going to keep that one to myself. <laughs> okay. Oh, not, man. Not, not safe for the household. Not safe for, for the children's show, right? Yeah. So Predator, Judge Dredd versus Aliens. So Wow. Look at in his in his, uh, uh, his glass visor. There, his visor. Yeah. Cool. Interesting. Wow. Who did that cover? I like the 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 face, uh, the contortion there. The it's really cool. It says Glenn Fabry. Glenn Fabre. Okay. Fabre. Great. Cool. So cool. Good job on that jawline. I tell you, really yeah. good job. It's like almost lifelike. Really right? cool. Yeah. 
It does look lifelike, man. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like Carmen San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know what? I think he's talking about this one. Super the pro project superpower. Oh, the one in the back. Yep. Carmen yeah. San Diego. Yeah, good one. Yeah, with guns. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Totally cool. Apparently, backpack uh, didn't do it. Right. So she had to go with the guns. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now this is New Mutants number 73, Ileana Saga. So mm, Inferno. Good storyline. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And this one is, ooh, this is cool. So this is Cursed Comics, Cavalcade, uh, number one. And it's got a swamp thing, Guy Gardner, Zatanna, Batman story. I saw I remember seeing this when it came out and I loved the cover. Yeah, it's an EC Comics homage, at least the trade dresses. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So that's cool. I remember yeah. seeing that come out and I was like, oh, that's so cool. Yeah. I love those those are the kind of comics. See, if you if you want to get me a modern, those are the kinds that I would like because they're yeah. homages to the past, you know, those kind of little tributes. Those are yep. cool. I think those are cool. I do too. There's that one that has Wolverine uh, holding Sabretooth's head. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I always think yep. Man, that is such a cool looking car. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this is Batgirl 18. So that's a newer one. I do love this this Batgirl outfit. I think she looks so awesome, but I never got into this run. So is she gliding? Cool. Yeah, it looks like she's gliding down, coming at Harley. Could, I didn't know she could do that. So there she oh. is there. Oh. That cursed comic cover is great. Yeah, Mark, for, for sure, man. Hey, 36 yeah. Chambers. Hey, 36 Chambers. Oh, this is cool. I got a little, all the a little cable um, little card. Ah, yes. Ooh. Super 90s. Look at that. Shiny goodness, as they say. It's yep. foil, foil enhanced, I'm assuming. Yep. Yeah, I've seen that. I don't have that series, but I've seen that card before. Yeah, I have a Is ton. that a double-sided card? It is. Yep. Huh. That's interesting. Okay. Same picture, just up close. Zoomed, zoomed in a bit, right? Yeah. Really. Yep. Cool. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Oh, nice. Another Iron Man 181. So that should go with the other Iron Man. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh. Doesn't look like it's Tony Stark in the Iron Man suit. Could be. Um, Rhodey. Rhodey. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's Rhodey. Yeah, that's yeah. when he took over for a while when they went over to California, I believe. I like it. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> this is a Harley Quinn number two. Wow, that's a busy cover. Yeah, super busy. Not a fan of Harley. I love her in the Batman Adventures. Mm -hmm. um, not a fan of her her recent no comics. Comic stuff, yeah. All right, two more books left, I think, or three. Let's see here. This is a Harley Quinn, another Harley Quinn, number one. So and this is uh, DC, number one, new 52. Awesome. And then uh, Klaus says, I'm so glad I'm not in the U.S. I would spend all my money on cards and all other cool stuff. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> well, yeah. It's, it's tough. You know, you have to have a modicum of self-control, but – uh, the cards, though, you know, I used to find those, Matt, like super cheap. Like I used to find sets for a dollar in conventions. I don't know. I don't know if they've come back, but it, it, yeah. after the 90s glut, they were super cheap. Yeah. Yeah, man. So, all right, two more books. I'm right. looking for that banger. Let's see if it's in here. I don't know if I missed something. Maybe there's something that's hot, but I haven't seen a banger yet. So... Uh, we need uh, Biggie Shack in here to define what banger means. Right. Mean, because, uh, <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out what that means. <laughs> and then, okay, so this is Weapon X, Age of Apocalypse. Uh, this is number one. Awesome. Whoa. Yeah, I, I, I've actually been reading this story recently, so that's cool. That's from the that's from the mid '90s, right? The, yes, before, sir. Before the onslaught thing, you you think he's got enough veins in that left arm? I mean, whoa. Yeah, man. Against I that mean, hair, it's competing. I, I mean, uh, uh <laughs> yikes. Yeah, I mean the, the the style the stylized art of the mid '90s. I tell you, is 
unique, shall we say? It is unique for sure. <laughs> it is unique, and still, I, I and still, I'm in love with Jim Lee, man. Oh yeah, Jim, no, Lee, Lee, Lee is good, good artist, no doubt about it, no doubt about it. So there's that one, and here is the last book. This is Ultimate FF number four, and uh, I've never seen this cover. It looks like Doom Vision, but uh, there's the last book. Ultimate FF. So, what's up, Old Wolf? Thank you for stopping by. Appreciate you. So, there it is. That That is the box. Oh. So, all righty then. I, I'm not sure if um, I missed something that was a, a big book or of any of those. So, anybody in the chat or watching this on the rewind, if there's something that maybe this is a hot book I have no idea about, let me know. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, you can check the key collector app when you finish you know? that's right i actually do subscribe to the key collector app so oh, okay all right well you don't even have to subscribe i don't think to it's true to look stuff up right yeah yeah so there it is guys 65 bucks right there towards comic jabroni's grail uh, wanted to help him out for sure and uh, let you guys be the judges if you think it's worth it or not um but uh that's it man that is another mystery box down another member of the comic community helped so i'm happy to be able to do that yeah he's, he's a good, good guy one of the good guys here i think he he rod and perry kind of started around the same time yeah and kind of came together and now they're you know just a terrific trio there on the new comic stuff that they do every week yeah man uh throw john's comics with kids in there and what do they call themselves the four horsemen Four horsemen, right? <laughs> I love right. it. I love it. Right. So yeah, they, they love they love those you know those you know those garish appellations you know they yeah. just love those kind of things. Four horsemen, three musketeers, you know, dynamic duo, you know. Uh, they just love those titles, I guess. <laughs> that's and that's cool. I think. I mean, because it, it makes them memorable, I suppose, and easy to identify. So there are thirteen books uh, total. Um, J Hood in the box. So that's it. Um, yeah, you're right, man. Um, and, and two of them already passed a thousand. Perry's real close, I think, unless he's done it recently. No, no he I did. think he's done it. Yeah, I he think he's done it. it. Yeah, yeah, I think so he's done three it. of them. Yeah, now man. we're trying to get you, John, up there, a whole bunch of the other guys and gals. So if, if it's meant to be, it'll happen eventually. I'm not, I'm not stressing it, you know. Yes, so. yeah, I agree with you, man. I, I'm, I'm still shocked that anybody. Is sub to my channel, so to have nine hundred something is uh, nine hundred something more than I expected. <laughs> so I, I am, I'm, I'm already ahead of the game. Trust me. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. No, we, uh, we definitely love you, man. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say, um, let's see here. BLC says I'm lucky to live down in the south. Uh, I, I maybe I'm missing the conversation. What's going on? Um, maybe it's really cold. Going on yet? Oh yeah. <laughs> No, we are lucky. Today was cold, though. Um, I woke up this morning, and I checked on my employees at work about 6.30 a.m., and it was uh, 19 degrees outside. <laughs> oh. So it was oh. cold here this morning. So I, I messaged them, and I'm like, guys, go to the office where the air, their heater's at. Have a safety meeting. Um, go ahead and clean up the office. Stay in there for a while until it gets above 32, and then be a, you know man up and go outside. <laughs> <laughs> and then man up. <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's cold, but not wet. Yeah, well, you live in a in a dry. You dr you live in an arid area. Yep. So. Yep. I mean, yeah, that that helps a little bit, I guess. But uh, <laughs> nineteen is still no joke. <laughs> yeah, it was it was cold this morning. Uh, negative seventeen. Woo! Yeah, see there you oh. go. Oh, cold right there. Oh yeah. Mike, hey Midwest, oh. what's up, man? Oh yeah, yeah, Mike. Uh, I, 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 you know, I really, you know, Mike area 51, he, he has these projects he does in the winter and they're because yeah. he knows he's not going anywhere. You know, when he gets back from work, he's staying at home, you know? So he does, he does like the Lego Harry Potter thing and all that stuff. And he, I think he had this dollhouse that he fixed up last year. Yeah. Smart. He, he's smart. He knows what's to come and he plans ahead. That's awesome. Yeah. That's gotta be a completely different experience for me, man. I, let's see the furthest. The furthest north I've been is probably New York, and uh, it was cold, and that was in March. So, and I, I was, I had layers on and everything, and I was still freezing. <laughs> oh yeah, I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Yep. Yep. I can only imagine. No, I've I lived in Florida my whole life, so this is the coldest I've ever been over here. It was, I think it was, 
it was like 20 degrees 20 some degrees when i woke up this morning took out the dog oh man and uh you know but you know i i, ha- I have my coffee yeah you know hot boiling hot coffee ready so i can pour <laughs> it down my gullet as soon as i come in because i'm <laughs> shivering you know man i um <clears throat> I've got a great Pyrenees, and I don't know if you got, you're familiar with that type of dog. Yes, I am. Absolutely. So, yeah, but they are sheep dogs that live in the Pyrenees Mountains, which is a mountain yeah. range between France and Spain. For those of Spain. you guys in the chat yep. that don't know, and they're sheep dogs, man. They're they're used to living outside, you know, driving away uh, mountain lions and bears and all kinds of stuff. And I mean, this guy's huge, and we named him Crypto. I think he's made a couple appearances in here, <laughs> but this big, humongous white dog with crystal blue eyes. And um, whenever it's cold outside, we'll bring him in. You know, at first, when we first got him, we brought him in because we thought it's too cold. Right. And then I did some research, and they actually love that weather. And so he'll he'll go by the door and try to get outside. And, and so last night, we left him outside, you know, um, to the chagrin of a whole bunch of dog lovers. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. But, but he, he loved it, man. He was just so happy. And I tried to get him to come inside this morning with the other dogs mm. because Oliver would have died out there. And uh, my little chihuahua. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. No insulation. <laughs> he just wants to stay outside and just relax wow. out there and have a good time. And he feels nice and comfy. So it, it was, it's, it, I just love him. I love him. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's th- those, those, uh, those kind of dogs. I mean, I, I had a neighbor who had a Siberian Husky in Florida, in Florida. Mm. Okay. And huh. I felt so bad for this dog during the summer because, you know, we, they'd walk around the block, you know, it's like 95 degrees, 90% yeah. humidity. Yeah, and then there's one day in late October, and we had this just huge just blast. I mean, it got to like the 30s, uh-huh. which in Florida just rarely happens. And I see this dog in the back in the backyard just running around, you know, just like just <laughs> <laughs> rubbing on the grass like it was snow what? because it was cool, you know. Yep. Those, uh, that, so those they they they, they really do uh, thrive in that environment. That's oh, that's yeah. what they that's what they are used to bred for, and that's what they like. So yeah. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah, man, I, I love it. I love it. And man, he's so humongous now. Like we had some friends that hadn't seen us for a while, and I'm like, "Have you seen our new dog?" And they're like, "No." He man, he's huge, man. I I tell him to get up on my chest. His arms are here on my shoulders. Mm-hmm. His face is like right here, just a little below my face. Like he is. He's massive, and he's still got maybe another seven months to grow. So, um, let, let me let me show you uh, my wife's seeing eye dog, Carmel. Carmel. Oh, I've had it on me the whole time. Look at that! I forgot to take me off. Carmel, that's okay. Hey, Carmel, say hi to everybody. Hold on. Sit. Oh, Sit. hey! hey. hey thank hi, you for Carmel. the paw. Thank you for the paw. Hey. Thank you for the paw. Yeah, that's a good girl. <laughs> Yeah, your your do YouTube debut right here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, hold, hold on. Awesome. Sit, sit. She's a lab. She's a Goldador, half uh, Labrador, half Golden Retriever. Awesome man. Yeah, she is awesome. a, the sweetest dog in existence. She's everybody's friend, and she it, the kids. Oh, you wouldn't believe how much she loves kids. She will like, she will do anything. She'll bring them toys. She'll she'll actually walk them around the house and just show yeah. her. Uh, her room and everything. She has her own little room here with her bed and the whole bit. She looks like she's a she's an old little girl. How old is she, man? She's eleven and a half. Yep. Yeah. She's yep. a little gray beard. She's she's, she's so retired now. She's no longer a seeing eye dog. She's beautiful, man. So she so she stays home with me. Um, <laughs> you know, most of the day when I'm home. So, <laughs> so, so yeah. Okay. What's up, Ray Van Doom? Man, I love that man, Rog. Thank you. I, I'm a huge animal fan, and. uh uh, she got me all excited to see her. I had uh, two, let's see, one, two, actually three labs in my lifetime. So oh, they're, they're great dogs. Yeah. They're great, great dogs. Um, I've had three labs. I've had three great Pyrenees, my one Chihuahua, two Australian Shepherds, um, one Rottweiler mix. Yep. I love animals, man. Love dogs. My favorite animal. Yeah, me too. Me too. If I had a Patronus, uh, a Great Pyrenees would come out the end of my Patronus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. oh, oh! B- Big Will had a half lab, half, half Saint Bernard. Oof, oh, nice. that must be actually. That, that must be a, 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 a very hungry dog. My friends have the exact same thing right now: half lab, really? half Saint Bernard. Yep. Wow, because th- those are two big eaters, right there. Uh, labs and St. Bernard's. Oh my. This one here, 
I mean, she'll eat anything. That's yeah. not, she'll eat vegetables, condiments, anything. If you if it drops, it's gone. Wow, wow. So, <laughs> trust me, you have no no problem with her and being finicky. She'll eat anything. That's awesome. What's up, Kevin? We need dogs for for Canada, huh? Area fifty one. <laughs> Living in the barrens of Canada, we picked the most needed dog for extreme weather. A weeder dog. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> uh, awesome. I love it. Oh boy. Yeah, man. I, I love cats and dogs. I had a cat that um man, I his his name was Mint, and we picked him up when I was probably like six years old. Um, he was still living when I moved out of my parents' house at 18. And um, but he loved fruit. You don't see many cats eating fruit. No. But if we were eating watermelon, mango, strawberries, oh my gosh, he would just come and just go to town on our fruit. <laughs> wow. Fabulous. And th this cat, and I got to give him some praise because I missed the heck out of him. He was the most holy cat you've ever met in your life. I kid you not. As a family, we'd have family prayer every night or morning. Mm -hmm. He'd come in, sit down with us. We'd say our prayer, amen, and then go our different ways or go to bed. Yeah. And, and he'd leave. My parents taught seminary just like I'm doing now, mon um, yeah. Monday through Friday for the high school kids for five years. Every single lesson he was in the room. After it was over, he'd take off and go do his thing. We'd, <laughs> we'd read scriptures as a family, sit down and read yeah. through the Bible. And he'd come in and sit there with us. And as soon as we were done, he would leave for 22 years, man. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Car Carmel does the kind of a similar thing. You know, when we're eating yeah. dinner and we pray and, and then we eat, she sits there yeah. and just sort of lies there. Right. And then when we leave, she goes back to her bed or to get her toys. And when we're reading, you know, the Bible or whatever. She like sits there, like you know, she's paying attention, <laughs> and then she leaves. So yeah, I mean, I don't know if I don't know if because you've done that for so many years, and since you're there, they kind of figure, right? hey, I should be there too, right? You gotta be with the family. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Oh, okay, so I'll take it's next level. Yeah, Edwin, I'm throwing you in right now, man. Um, next level though, bro. I kid you not, Medrock. He slept with me uh, every night, and. Um, uh, probably from the time I was 12 to 18. Mm -hmm. And if I had been a bad kid at school that day, <laughs> he'd walk into my room and look at me and he'd almost shake his head and he'd walk wow. out of the room, man. I kid you wow. not. So I get on my knees. <laughs> wow. you, had like, account you had an accountability cat. <laughs> he did. I'd get on my wow. knees and be like, dear God, please forgive me for everything please I did. Forgive me. Today. Wow. And then in the middle of my prayer, as I'm repenting there, he'd come back in the room, jump on my bed, and he'd be good. Wow. Did you not, guys? No exaggeration at all. It's insane. Wow. So. <laughs> Our dog doesn't do that part. No. I <laughs> uh, miss that cat, man. We buried him in my parents' backyard. Um, he was just such a great cat, along with my uh, my first, my second great Pyrenees. And uh, all right, link sent, brother. All right, man. I better jump out of here because I got to finish up dinner. Um, All right, man. No since, worries. Since you're gonna since you're gonna have company here in a minute, yeah. I don't feel too bad abandoning you here. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, brother. All right, brother. Hey, um, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Thanks for everything you do. I appreciate you, man, Rock. Yeah, man. Thank again. You know, anytime if I'm available, I'm there, buddy. You know, you know, you you are next level to me. So thank you, bro. Uh, anything goes as far as if I if I can do if I can be there, I will. All right. Thank you. Thank All you. All right, man. everybody in the community in the chat. Take care, guys. Everybody be blessed and be back. Bye. See you later, brother. <laughs> All right, guys. So uh, Metarog's out. Thank you, Metarog, for being with us. And uh, the man of the hour, comic book jabroni. Here he is, guys. Say what's up to Edwin. What's up, Matt? How's everybody doing today? This fine new comic book day. What's up, brother? I'm good, man. I'm good. I just saw, I guess you were live right now, weren't you? I, I, I went live really quickly, man, because... Yeah. I'm selling some slabs. I've got extra books in my collection that I figure let me let me get let me get these out and save the money up for you know the ultimate goal, turtles yeah. number one, man. Yeah, man. That's what we were talking about earlier. I was telling everyone that's your goal. And we wanted to help you get there, man. So and then I was looking down, I'm like, oh crud, he's live. I guess we just did it, didn't get together the right way. But you're on hey, here. Dog. Yep, I'm on here, man. It's all good. I uh it was it, it was impromptu. I kind of talked about it last night. Yeah. With the with the guys uh, that I wanted to go live to show off these these slabs that I have that are for sale. So anybody that missed that, 
It's on my channel. It should upload after whatever it has to do. You want to you want to show any of those now? Uh, yeah. Let me hold on. You don't have to, but if you want to, I mean, we got time, bro. So, all right, cool. German shepherds are awesome. Love those dogs, man. My brother and sister have one, and uh, some athletic animals right there. Uh, Perry, what's up, Perry? Air Spider Twenty Three. Thank you guys for stopping in. Yeah, Perry Comics says everyone goes live at the same time nowadays. Yeah, there's only so many hours in the day. True. I try I try not to step on people's uh, toes, man, but like with 12 days of Christmas, I had to kind of leave it up to whoever the guest was, what time they had available. Right. So many times that like yesterday I was I was wanting to be with you guys uh, hanging out on Rod's channel and um Steve Whiting and um oh my gosh, look at me going blank now. Um Hylia and some of the guys hooked me up with an AOK, and that was the only time they could do it. So I was like, "All right, we'll go live," you know. And it's kind of how it is nowadays. There's so many of us. Hey, well, people can have like uh, three or four tabs open with a bunch of live streams on. It's true. Man. It's true. I do it all the time. I'll have one one here on uh, on this stream, and then on this one, and then on my phone, and I'm like talking to everybody. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so hey, what's up, Kevin? So Kevin's asking. Um, all right, cool. What do you say? Jabroni, you got a CGC grade killing joke 9.8. Uh, so one of one of the things that I, I knew that I didn't want to do through the process of trying to acquire these turtles was sell anything Ninja Turtles or anything Batman, Batman Joker that meant the most to me. So my killing joke is not up for sale as of yet, right? Because if I get to a point where I'm so close, but what puts me over the top is maybe selling you know my my really key batman books and I, I might do that but as of right now i just want to sell books that i have that don't really mean much to me you know yeah um sure. and some of them are cbcs like this this amazing spider-man nice. cbcs 9.4 you know first appearance of carnage that's for sale um here's a really big one it's a low grade but people want first appearance oh, of blade yeah. yeah it's a hot book right now 3.5 low grade better than no grade you know but I've got it for sale. And like I said on my stream, uh, everything is based off of Go Collect and the fair market value. Yeah. I didn't go on eBay and try to like price the the different sell, you know, sales of them. I just went to Go Collect, fair market value. I, I think that that's gonna be the best, um, the best bet. Predator number one, 9.4. Oh. Oh, it's a cool second cover. print, it's a really dope cover. I love this cover of Predator. Yeah, it is. Uh, one of the big ones that I've got is where is it? Where is it, where is it? This God Country number one, nine point eight. Nice. So this one I have the whole series, but only number one is slabbed. So if somebody wants to buy number one, we can talk about you know maybe just you buying the whole series from me. Yeah. Because I you know some people didn't get onto God Country. Yeah. Right when it was out. Uh, Savage She Hulk nine point four. Hot book. So that's another one that I've got for sale. Uh, Eternals number one is a 9.0 CGC I got for sale, which I forgot to show on the stream for some reason. I, I left it up on the wall. Um, Thanos 13 and a 9.8 first appearance of Cosmic Ghost Rider. Nice. That one's going to be for sale. Uh, totally awesome Hulk 22 first appearance of Weapon um, H. A, yeah, Weapon H. That's a 9.8. Yeah. So hit me up through my email. Check that video out. I have my email down there, and um, I have a list, a Word document of everything, all the slabs that I have for sale with the prices next to them. I will email that to you. Cool. Cool, man. So you already got round number two for sale right now for the mystery boxes? No, not yet. Okay. Um, what I'm going to uh, – I'm waiting because, you know, it's Christmas time, holiday season. Okay. People were buying a lot of gifts. So I'm going to wait till mid-January. Okay. Maybe like January 15th, and then I will announce. Let's let's do this. Um, 30 boxes. I'm gonna do this round. Sweet man. And they're gonna be fifty dollars even. I, I saw that doing the 50 plus the shipping got to be kind of a headache. Okay. Um, so I just want to do fifty dollars straight. It's still gonna be priority mail. I won't do media mail. Um and I think you were the only one, Matt. I don't know if you've told that story about your box coming in. You were the only one that your box, for some reason, it, it got messed up in transit, man. It was soaked, bro. I was so worried like the books were going to be wet. But when I opened it up, they were totally fine. Oh, thank yeah. It dude. sat on something, you know, wet, but not like in a puddle so that it right. kind of soaked up what was ever it was ever, whatever it was sitting on. 
but the inside was the plastic and the way you wrapped it was there perfectly fine, man. Dude, so your box was the first one to get delivered, right? You were the first person to get a box. Yeah. Because you're in El Paso, which is like eight hours away from me. So yeah. it pretty much got the same day I, I sent it. And when you sent me that message, I mean, all sorts of bad things were running through my head. <laughs> and I, and I, I remember I called the wife. I was at school. I called the wife. She said, oh, my God, are all the boxes like that? I said, holy yeah. crap. Yeah. Oh, no, I was so yeah. nervous, man. But when you told me it was okay. Oh, oh dude. You're like, Matt's going to go live and blast me right now, man. Dude. Like, it's over. <laughs> you know, I wasn't nervous about that, man. You're you're a good guy. You wouldn't do that. <laughs> but still, like, ah, if this went poorly, and you said it yourself, I hope this goes well for you. Yeah. Because if this first box went poorly, then I would not be able to sell any more boxes, yeah. you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But when I sold the, the um, 100 boxes earlier this year, it, they slowly took me two months to get them all sold. But as people were opening them up, people were like, Oh, that's actually a good box. You know, let me, let me go jump on that. You know? So I right. wanted the same thing for you. I didn't want, I didn't want the box to be messed up. And honestly, man, if it, they had been all wet, I would have been like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't buy a box. Man. I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, you know, I, I was really nervous as people started opening the boxes, making videos, but I've, I've gotten none but good feedback. Cool. Like people are happy. Yes. Not everybody got a grand prize. Comic Fu got the grand prize. Yeah he, yeah, he did. And he, I mean, in his video, you can't see his face, but it seemed like he was super happy about it. Dude, you know, it's first appearance of Wolverine. I mean, come yeah, on. Oak 180. You know, but everybody else, I, I made sure to put keys in there that you feel like you got your money's worth, man. Cool. So I'm, I'm hoping, and now I'm starting to get a lot of messages on Instagram and through email I missed out on the first box, but I'm definitely going to be in on the second box. There you go. And and what's, your, what's your big grand prize? Because I know I know your friend hooked you up again, didn't he? Oh, he I mean, he hooked me up, brother. <laughs> it, <laughs> Avengers, <laughs> number four, man. Dang, dude. It, it, it's a low grade, but it's still. It's, it's a huge key, man. This is a big time grail for a lot of people. And so that's the epic cover. This is the grand, grand prize. But this round is going to have three slabs. So the second one is Fantastic 425. Man, hold on. So this is the uh, second appearance of uh, Captain America in the Silver Age. Dang, dude. So that'll go in a box. And then the last one is not that key as those two, but it is Marvel Team Up 141. Love that book, man. Love yeah. purple, black, beautiful. So, man, you're hooking it up this the second round. Brother, I have my eye on the prize, and it helps that I have, you know, an awesome friend that is trying to help me get this book. Dude, that guy's dude, legit, man. Dude, Alan has been one of my best friends, best comic friends for the past four or five years that I've known him. The knowledge that this guy has has just been incredible for me just to be able to pick at his brain yeah. about comics, man, from the 60s, 70s. He knows stuff about Golden Age. You know, and it's like TJ the Slab Dragon. A lot of these guys have been collecting forever. Yeah. Alan is like that. He's just not on YouTube. Wow. So Chad's asking, uh, he wants to lock up eight boxes, man. Huh. <laughs> yeah, Chad. And, that, that's, that, that's one that, thing. Killer luck, too. Did you see the, the AF-15 he won? Who, what do you mean? Chad, he won an AF-15, bro. Oh, my gosh. Signed by Stan Lee from Torpedo Comics in a mystery box like two weeks ago. Dang. How much were those boxes? Twenty. Uh, they were $100. Um, and the, the AF-15, like 22 grand, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, uh, it's a good $100 investment. Right? <laughs> man. That's why he wants these eight boxes. He wants it all, bro. All his luck, he's good to go. So my only thought is I, I want as many people to get a chance to win, you know, to win this book. Yeah. And, and I think I'm going to limit this, the, the amount that I'll sell to one person to maybe two per person, you know, two per person. Yeah. Cause yeah, it, it'll be easy for somebody to just buy all 30 of them. Yeah. And oh, then, man, you know, you have all three of these slabs plus the 30 boxes that I'm going to make for you. So I, I want to, um, I want to limit it because I want everybody to have a chance, man. It's it's all about giving back to the community too. That's given so much to me yeah. and been so awesome to me, man. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, boo, the kid boo. needs three at least. Yeah, three. <laughs> I, I had, I had an idea. And I'm going to run this idea by you and everybody else in the chat. Do it, and it's probably not going to fly over too well. And my wife said, you're crazy. But I thought about 
doing two, okay you can buy two boxes at the fifty dollars per box yeah and then if you want another box i'm gonna I'm going to upcharge. I'm going to say, okay, the next, the third box is a $60, $70 box. You yeah. can have a third box, but you're going to pay more for the third box. Yeah. And for each box you want. And that kind of limits people. Like they're, they're going to say, okay, I'll buy two, but I'm not going to get the third if it's going to cost me that much. Yeah. You know, if, if you're selling enough boxes to get them all done, because the ultimate price and the goal is to get your Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, right? So if you've right. got enough people coming in to buy up the boxes, not a bad idea, you know? Um, Gosh, man, I had people buy six, seven, eight boxes for me, two, wow. one, you know, when I, but I was selling a hundred at once. So I was like, anything you'll take, I'll take it, man. I even had a guy buy 18 boxes. Wow. You know? So, uh, but, but how long did, here's a question. How long did a hundred boxes take you to put together? Oh, bro. Uh, <laughs> probably, probably a good 30 hours. Yeah, you know, because first thing I did is I pulled all my books out and decided what I wanted to get rid of and what I was keeping. Then from there, I had to price all of them out to see what they were going for at that moment. You know, then right. I had to put those in different boxes. Then I had to get all the different boxes, put them together, and make sure each box had what I said it would have in it. You know, then I had to put it together, wrap them all up, close them up. Then once I did that, then people started buying two or three, and instead of me doing what you did, you know, or maybe it wasn't you. No, it was the slab dragon boxes. But like when I bought slab dragon boxes, I bought two and I thought they just ship them together, but they shipped them separately. So, yeah, that, you know, that's what I did. Is that what you did too? Well, cause Kelvin, uh, Kelvin Cartagena, he bought two boxes, Yeah, but I made all 20 boxes at the same time. Yep. And if you saw the video, like my I kid, did. we mixed them all around. Yep. And it, it was a, it was total mystery. Like even I didn't know where the grand prize went to. Yeah. I had no idea, man. Yeah, man, that's good. I like I like that you did it that way. But yeah, it took forever. And then I ended up like pack like the guy that bought 18, I wasn't gonna ship 18 boxes separately, you know? Yeah. I got this humongous box, took them all out. I left them in the inner packaging and then just put them all together, you know. And uh it was crazy. It was crazy. Yep. I don't the know. The way I, I did, I, I knew I had 20 boxes. One was a grand prize. I already knew what that was. Yeah, but the, the the key issues that I knew I wanted to give in each box, I put those out, and then I started putting. I went through my collection. Okay, this is gonna go here. This is gonna go here. Yeah. So there was like a Walking Dead box that Mike from uh, Downright Nerdy he he got like a Walking Dead kind of themed box. Cool. Um, uh, Rod the Rican got the Shazam number one. I saw that he loves that's, it too. I mean, that's a huge that's a huge key issue. So he got that. You know, so. I, I think I did well, but of course it was my first mystery box. So I'm, I, I have, I'm still learning. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, uh, I've done a couple since then and, uh, it's always just something new, getting people excited about it, keeping your word and whatever you say you're going to put in there, you know? So and it was all there. Like I wasn't a liar. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, and for, for comic food to open up that 180, how cool is that, man? That's awesome. And the fact that your friend hooked you up with that and, and it's getting you to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle one and we're all part of this community and we want you to get there. It's just good stuff, you know? Yeah, man. Comic karma, I truly believe in. Yep. Yeah, I agree with you, man. So I already opened the box, but I'm going to run through it. You can kind of tell me about any keys I might have missed or anything, man. Sounds good. You down? So my favorite thing in the box, and it's going to bring me back to my childhood. There you go. <laughs> Look at that cable. <laughs> That's awesome. I put... I put a card in everybody's box. Did you? Yep. Everybody got one of those foil Marvel cards. Awesome, bro. All right. So this is Ultimate uh, Fantastic Four, number four. There you go. That's first Spider-Ham. Ah, is that the really? Ultimate Spider-Ham. The Ultimate Spider-Ham. Spider Sweet, man. See, I didn't know. When I open it up, I'm like, I have no idea what this is, but I like the Fantastic Four. So cool. And then uh, Weapon X, uh, number one, Age of Apocalypse. Just a dope cover to me, man. Yeah, for sure, man. Uh, Harley Quinn number one. Looks like maybe a one shot for the new 52. Could be wrong. I think that's that. that yeah, that's a Harley Quinn number one from new 52. Okay, so it's numero uno. Yeah. Cool. All right. Harley Quinn number two, then. There you go. Yep. All right. And then let's see. I'm going to put those together. This is a Batman 18. Really cool cover. Yeah, that was that Josh Middleton cover that picked up a lot of heat yep. a few months ago. Man, I, I think Batgirl looks awesome in her, uh, what is that, Burnside suit? Mm -hmm. 
So this is a cool one. This is one of my favorite ones too in the box. Uh, Cursed Comics, um, that homage. Yep, that's awesome, man. I really dug it when that came when that came out. I I made sure I picked up two issues of that. I liked it. It's a good one, man. Uh, okay, so this is New Mutants number seventy three, the Inferno storyline. There we go. And then uh, Predator versus Judge Dread versus Aliens. I love that. I man, I don't know if you've ever read that, but it's it's so awesome for those three to come together to fight each other. Yeah, that's cool. I'm gonna check that out for sure. Read it. All right. I got a uh, one that I'm not gonna throw up there. Uh, it's a little violent for my audience, but it's pretty violent. Number one. So. Oh yeah, that was an image image title, right? Image title, yeah, man. Yeah. So I had never seen that one before. And yeah, not for kids. Not for kids. Definitely not for kids, right? And then uh, Project Superpowers number zero. Yeah, I like that Matina. I think that's a Matina cover. Yeah, man. It's got everyone was saying that's uh, Carmen San Diego back there. <laughs> yeah, that, that's who that looks like. <laughs> With guns. That's awesome. And then I got Iron Man number 179, 180, and 181. So like a little little run right there. There you go. I, I made sure to put a run of something in everybody's box too. Yeah. So you can read a whole story. There it is, man. I guess it's Rhodey in the suit, which is pretty yep. cool. I, I, dude, I dig that those Bronze Age um, Iron Man covers. I love this cover for sure, bro. Like, I love that color, the green hue. Yep. The art on that, really cool. And then this blue one is dope as well. Kind of reminds me of like an old school Kirby, you know? Yeah. So God, those are those are nice, man. Yeah, bro. So that's it, man. That's that's the box right there, brother. So I like that. Uh, so it's the first Ultimate Spider Ham, huh? Yeah, Ultimate Spider Ham, first first appearance. <laughs> Spider Ham's awesome. That one, I remember it was on that uh, the Key Comic Collector app, uh -huh. and people people went bonkers for it. And I went to my LCS, and I think they had like two or three of them. I took them all. Nice, man. I love when that happens. One of my favorite finds, uh, and it took me a while. I went over to um, a comic shop that I don't no normally shop at because it's on a different part of town. It takes me about twenty minutes to get to. Right. But it's an old shop. This lady had all these long boxes underneath, you know, the the regular table that she has her regular stuff on. And I'm like, can I look through everything? She's like, sure. So I started going for hours, man, just looking and pulling stuff. And I get to this one box towards the end of the day. It's like three hours in. And I find eight copies of Thanos 13. Woo. And I was like, oh, oh. Oh, <laughs> I'll take them all. So I'm freaking out thinking when, you know, when I get to the front, she's going to be like, okay, 50 bucks each or whatever. And uh, now, man, she has a policy that if she doesn't give you a discount on any books and she doesn't charge extra, whatever is the cover price uh, or if they're on the wall, whatever price is on the sticker, that's what you pay. So I pulled them out and she's like cover price for all of them. So I was like, dang, mine, man. Good find. So, yeah, dude. Yeah. I, I ended up flipping, um, Five of them, giving uh, two away in the mystery boxes. It worked out really nice, man. Did you did you get them all graded? I didn't. I I sold them raw. Oh, okay. And, uh, I kind of kicking myself now. You know, I wish I had have sent a, a bunch of those in. Yeah. But I, out of the eight, maybe three of them were nine eights. Yeah, because I um like my Thanos thirteen. It says a nine eight is a two hundred and fifty dollar fair yep. market value. Like yep. wow. Yep. So, I mean, I could have made some more money, but I sold them all for, I think, 75 to 125 depending on what they were going for. Right. But, man, if I had to send those in, I would have had a much bigger profit, you know? Hey, sometimes, you know, but you still won. In the end of the day, yep. you, still, exactly. you still made out. Exactly. So that's, that's awesome. And, I, you know, Matt, I, I hope you you feel like you you got your your money's worth out of that box. And I, I totally appreciate you being one of the first people to, to jump on you yeah. know, the bandwagon to help me out, man. Yeah, for sure, bro. I uh, as soon as I saw your video that you posted and you were talking about and stuff, I'm like, he wants a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle one. The reason I sold mystery boxes is because I wanted some big boy books, you know. And I, I know that feeling. You have good stuff that people would love and appreciate. So I'm like, got it, man. I got to help support, you know. Yeah, I feel like you know I, I've been doing this collecting for four years now, and I, I've got. A lot of Batman, a lot of turtles that are on the other side of the room from the rest of my comics. Yeah. But there's a lot of good stuff here, man, that I'm, I'm willing to put in a, in a mystery box to send out of the community that somebody else is going to love in their collection as well. Yep. Yep. And that turtles is, is 
gonna get slabbed and it'll be up here, man, on the turtle wall, yeah, baby. What grade are you looking for? Do you know yet, dude? Uh, you know, in the stream that I just did earlier, somebody asked me the same. I just want something that is complete and not torn to shreds. Cool, you know, presents well, man. So even a five zero, five five. It's exactly what I was gonna say. I've seen some five zero's at a good price. Yeah, man. Earlier like, this year, complete. Yeah. After I sold the mystery boxes, I had a good chunk of change, bro. Selling a hundred of them for a hundred bucks, add some good money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I bet. <laughs> and uh, I was really tempted to use it towards an AF15, towards an FF1. I even looked at a 9.0 um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one, and yep. at white pages, and I was like, oh man! But I saw the price on that thing, and I was like, okay, I love the turtles, dude. But not like you know, you are a turtle man. You know what I'm saying? That's your thing. Yeah, I love turtles, it. Tur turtles are up there for me, but not at the top. And so I spent and that's that a, money. And that's a comic. That's a book that's just continued to do this. Yeah. You know, not as much as some others, but it's it's continuously rising. It, yeah. And they only made 3,000 of them. That's the thing. It's so rare to find yeah. the first print. Yep. You low, know, low print. Yeah, man. But you know what? I, I may end up one of these days picking up a little bit of a lower grade. Because some some of those fives and five fives, man, they look beautiful. Yep. They're at a price I'm comfortable with. And um, so, man, I mean, even if you go with one of those, epic. Yeah, epic. you can definitely, and, you know, some of them, they, they were slabbed, but they weren't pressed. They weren't clean. So you can crack it and pr get it pressed, get it clean, and may maybe get a, a bump in grade. Yep. For me, it's just owning that grail, you know? Like yeah. we talk about what's your grail? Tony Sanders, yeah. what's your grail? That's That's mine. That's it, awesome, man. That's it's not awesome. AF 15, although that's awesome, man. Spider Man for somebody that's the book they really want. Yep. For me, it's Turtles number one, man. Yep. Low print run like crazy. Dude, 3,000, dude. That's, there that's there, I don't even know if there's an indie book that comes out on a Wednesday that has that low of a print run. Yeah. Yeah. They're low, but they might not be that low. They're low, and uh, people didn't appreciate them when they first came out. People no. are looking at Eastman's art, like Metarog was saying earlier, and they're like, what is this nonsense? You know? Right. People really didn't appreciate it. And then after a while, like, okay, I get it. This guy's legit. Speaking of uh, Mr. Uh, Teeny MNT1, what up, Houdat? <laughs> oh, yeah, I know who that got one. He got a nice one. <laughs> yeah, who that got a, a TMNT first print, number one. I'm jealous. I'm Air jealous. Spider 23 says he started buying TMNT in the single digits, and number one was already an impossible book to get. Yeah, man. Crazy. I have the whole um that that original Mirage run. I've got a good chunk of those. I've got two through ten. Yeah. But I don't I miss it. Well, number one, I got in a third print, but I, I want the first, you know? Yeah. I had never read a turtles book until this year. Um read? other than the oh, what are they? Um once they got changed to like cartoony. Oh, the um, adventures. Yeah, the adventure, adventure ones. I, yeah. I read those, man. But I hadn't read the original number one. And so I went to Amazon and I got them digitally like all the way through. I can't remember, but high, it's pretty high up there. And I've been reading them and I'm loving them. And then I picked up Shredder and Hell. Oh, good. It's I was in love with Shredder and Hell. And finally I, I gave in and I got um, TMNT 100. There you so go. I haven't That's read good. it yet, but I'm excited. It, man. You know, it's a good jumping on point in my opinion, man. You get the culmination of this story that's been going on since issue 50. And, uh, you know, it started right here with these. These are my team and team number ones. Nice. And it's it's a, to, to me, in my opinion, it's a great series, man. Turtles. It's not as cartoony as we remember the cartoon to be. You know, it's so wacky and zonky. It's yeah. it's a little bit darker, man. Pe turtles yeah. die. People die. Um, characters are dying off. And it's it's what I want in a, in a Ninja Turtle comic. That's cool, man. Yeah, I just I remember those Saturday mornings watching those cartoons playing with my toys man ninja turtles versus star wars versus dragon ball versus batman versus spider-man <laughs> i've got i've got the whole first series of turtle toys no in way my, in my case right here next to me and i just completed that on saturday i was only missing the foot soldier so i picked up the foot soldier so now i have all the whole first series congrats man That's oh epic. man so excited my son is always coming in here he's like daddy when when can we play with those no nope. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can't play with those. <laughs> get you your own. Trust me, I'll get you your own. <laughs> yeah, he can't. He can't have those, man. He played with you know. He played with these that I have up here. Those are reprints. Yep. But the originals, ah. Yeah, man. I still have the frog guy. Uh, you you saw yo Jimbo. Yo Jimbo. Jimbo. Usagi yo Jimbo. Yeah. Usagi. Um, I've got. I 
think I've got Donatello and Leonardo. And my kids have played with those. I had them in a box and they, I should have taken more care of them, but I played with them really rough. They took them over once I got married. And I so. got lucky with these. There was a lady on Craigslist that was selling a whole box. Mm -hmm. I went on Craigslist one night and uh, she had a whole box for 50 bucks with every, um, you know, every weapon, every toy, oh, man, a bunch of the vehicles for $50. I was, I was there in a heartbeat. Yep. Picked them all up and they were in great condition. Bro, if she's got the swords and all the weapons, man, you did get lucky. Everything. Yes. Everything was in that box, man. Yeah, man. So, Krang. Good old Krang. I remember Krang. Bebop, rock steady. Somebody was up here asking a question I wanted to answer before sure. I, I have to run off. Um, Chris Barrett says, I, I, I remember hearing somewhere that at least the first run of Team and T1 were signed by Eastman and Laird. I want to say it was the first through the four. One, two, three, and four. On the inside, there are some out there that are signed by Eastman and Laird. Oh, that's cool. Because it, it was Comic Foo that actually AOK'd me number four that's signed by Eastman and Laird. Wow. So they did that. Back in the day, they would go to cons to try to sell turtles, and they would sign the inside of those books. That's cool. I like that I like that idea for signature because I'm not a signature guy. I don't really like SIGs on my, on my covers. Right. Um, there's some that I do like, but – uh, to have it inside, that's a really great idea. Yeah, and they're they're inside on that on that first page. Nice, nice. Well, guys, we're gonna get out of here. But uh, for those of you watching, you want a box? Hit this man up. Like you said, they should be available in January. Uh, Fifty bucks flat. You could get a Avengers number four. Holy cow, man! I mean, look at those books that are gonna be in there. Man. I think these two right here, man. <laughs> that's that's some beast stuff right there, bro. So, but uh, guys, thanks for hanging out with us. Appreciate y'all watching. Appreciate the support. Love the community. So, uh, anything going on before we take off for you? Any, anything we can tell anybody about? Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to have my new comic book day review video. I edit that video and I'll have it out tomorrow. We're going to, I'm going to discuss image and indie books that I picked up. And then Friday, I'll go live. It's usually around 1 p.m. Central, and we'll go over Marvel and DC and just chat about comics. Sweet, brother. Congrats again on the 1,000. You're already moving on up the list from there, so happy for Thanks, you. Thanks, man. For sure. Thank you, sir. All right, y'all. Well, we'll see you later. Uh, as always, mischief managed. <laughs>